the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Los Angeles. Her name is Cooper Phillip. Miss Phillip, how are you doing today? Hi, thank you so much for having me today. I'm um, really excited. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, good. Thanks for asking. Uh, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you. All right. Now, um, Cooper... Uh, your team has sent me some information about you, and I, I love your uh, song, Exceptional Feeling. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, but that is an awesome song. We're going to talk about that. Um, but before we get into your, um, your music, let's get a little bit of background for those who um, have never heard of Cooper Phillip. Tell us about yourself. So I was born in Russia. Uh, my parents are classical musicians. I started playing classical music when I was five. Um, I started as an instrumentalist, I played piano and harp. Then I heard Mariah Carey around, I don't know, maybe I was 12 or 11 years old. And I got so excited about her singing style and what she was capable of doing with her voice. So I started copying and rehearsing every single day for five, six, seven hours a day. I was trying to copy what I was hearing and back then I, I didn't really speak English or understood the language so my, my whole English uh, journey well, you know with, with speaking and um, you know singing and writing songs in English started with uh, titles of Mariah Carey's uh, album you know I was turning it you know the backside and I started reading the, those words I had no idea what it meant and then I was looking it up and that's how I started my, my journey and my entire life I only wanted to sing um, you know, Western music, jazz, soul, um, everything that was kind of um, far from the culture and society I was, you know, uh, living <laughs> in. So it was kind of hard to um, to kind of like stay authentic to your yourself. So I started, to, um, you know, participating um, in like different singing jazz competitions. And uh, I started winning a lot of them, so I won over 60 of them. And um, kind of like more I was growing into the industry in Russia, more I was realizing that this is not the country for my, for my dream. This is not where I can um, achieve my goals. And I couldn't sing in English, basically. So uh, when I was 18, I just realized that, I, I, you know, if I have to, you know, take a chance and change my life and step up and do something, it's the time. So I basically uh, moved to the United States and uh, I started from scratch. Um, it was really uh, awesome, to be honest, because uh, I I didn't I couldn't realize my strength and the, the actual character that I had uh, before I had to go through this immigration because it was really tough and the the. The status, uh, the extraordinary status that I got, um, and the and green card, um, it was all through music because uh, all the diplomas and all the people, people that I worked with uh, in Russia and in the United States at the time, they all like wrote letters to me, um, supporting you know me, um, and then it took me two years to uh, get my green card. So it was, it was, I have to tell you, it was like a really big struggle. Uh, to to get stable and get to the point where you can actually do music full time, you know. So I'm really grateful that I'm here today, and um, you know, a lot of people know about me already. Uh, for me, my whole path and the music journey for me was never about uh, being famous. It was never about proving anything that I'm better or um, you know. It was always about spreading the philosophy of strength. And uh, being true and honest with yourself, first of all, because you know, coming, come, like raising 
um, basically growing up in this in this environment of post Soviet Union, you have certain things that you're not supposed to talk about certain things, and you're not supposed to be a certain way. You have to blend blend in with the society and be like everybody else. Where like in America, it's completely opposite. You only grab attention of the people where you're bringing something extra. So it took me some time to realize that I can express myself freely and fully in this country, and that's where I started rolling into this artist, uh, having those ideas and thoughts in my music where I was able to, um, you know, express myself fully and reach and have the connection with my audience. So all the music I started writing um, from the bottom of my heart, knowing that people connect the most with my story. And I'm this, you know, uh, girl who came from Russia, started from scratch. Uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, music is life, and I also teach. I have a very successful um, educational course that I'm uh, traveling with. Uh, I went to 18 countries and taught over 3,000 students at this point in a year and a half. Uh, I teach uh, breathing. I teach singing. I teach riffs. I help people who speak uh, Russian and Ukrainian uh, to overcome the accent and kind of find a way to sing American music more authentic. Um, you know, because sometimes people think, oh my God, this, this accent will not work. If you want to sing in English, you have to be perfect. And the way I'm working with those people is kind of like changing their mind about who they are and accepting themselves, you know? So. Music and coaching, uh, voice coaching, has been a big part of my life right now and doing shows in between and showcasing like all kinds of different songs that I wrote like this year, last year, like 10 years ago. So that's pretty much where I'm at today. Okay. Now, let me, uh, let me get back to uh, your journey here from Russia. Um, did you come out here by yourself, or did your yes. did your family follow you, or you came by yourself? So I came I came out by myself. Wow. Um, I basically had the support of my mom all the time. She I'm the only child, and she raised me without a father. So she's been always like my closest person, my you know like my best friend. So she's been always super supportive of my my dream, and she's a classical musician. She's a classical violinist. Uh, she's been helping me out throughout my entire education, helping me to get better. Uh, she was like fighting for me, taking me to all those singing competitions and being there for me always. Um, so after I went for the first time and I was so excited about the opportunities that I get in this country, I called her up and I said, Mom, you should come visit me. So my mom came uh, to the United States um, a little later and she stayed. And we kind of now, uh, now she's, yeah, she's already, um, you know, having her life here. She, she's no longer doing music. She found her passion for cooking, and now she's a pastry chef at one of the best successful restaurants <laughs> in Los Angeles. Wow. That's, that's how it turned out. Fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah the, um, to come to a foreign country by yourself, I mean, that takes some determination. Congratulations on that. You know, I've, I've never felt like I'm losing anything, and I didn't have a lot to lose, I guess. I felt like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing there. So I kind of, for me, it was a very um, expected risk, I would say, because I thought it would be much easier. I, thought, I didn't know what I'm going into, obviously, but this whole experience, this journey was painful, sometimes upsetting, and, you know, because you, you get to some places where you don't want to be and it's, it's tough um, but you know it's all about music and it's all about experiencing life and uh, spreading love through music so I have no regrets and I'm really happy to be here uh, I feel like I'm new me um, to be honest and I'm able to give so much more I'm actually able to give something to people right now because I have um I have something to talk about, you know, because the journey is what inspires me to write, write songs for myself or other artists, because I do write a lot for other people too. And I actually, as a songwriter, this passion for writing, I discovered it just recently. 
1983, four years ago. Uh, I always thought, you know, I've been studying singing and I, I know the technique, so my thing is I'm a singer, so I'm not a composer, so I'm not going to write music. That's how it is in Soviet Union, that's how it is in Russia. Do what, what you do best and stick to it, you know? So if you're not a composer, don't try to be a composer. So here in America, it's completely opposite. You've got to be uh, everything. And the more things you have, uh, more bigger opportunities you can get. So I started developing that. Uh, I also vocal produce. I love vocal production. Uh, I love helping artists in the studio. I love coming out with coming up with uh, some like voices and like backgrounds that are complicated because you know the classical background. I've been listening to lots of like symphonies and operas as a kid and studied classical music for over like 12 years. So I have this ability to hear things. Uh, in a little bit different way than just pop people like studying just you know pop music. So I think classical background is is a strength, it's a power. I think it's it's very positive. And I think people who uh, just singers, um, it's really it's harder for them to express themselves. I think because obviously there is some you know um, exceptions, but I think being able to play, being able to compose bring you up to the next level where you can complete your look and become a real artist. Artist to me is someone who really can be honest, vulnerable, can write, sing, and be more than just someone who can sing well, you know? So that's kind of my philosophy. Absolutely. Um, now, how long have you been doing music here in the States? Uh, about 11 years. As well. okay. But the first first two years, first two years, um, it's been really hard because I had to like survive and get my papers done. And I was working as a singer uh, at Russian club in Brooklyn, and all the money that I was making, I was saving to pay to the lawyers to be able to get my extraordinary ability visa because it takes so much time and so much, um, you know, documents to, you know, the case. You have to put it together carefully, send it out. And then you're waiting on the the results, and then it takes time. You know, it's it's a process, definitely. So it took over two years just to get there. And then after I got approved for my green card, then my life like fully started. So I could do so many more things uh, as an artist. Yeah, but it's really tough when you have like no support. But my mom, she was like the biggest support for me. So everything that she was making as a um, chef assistant first, uh, she she basically was helping me out. Yeah, my mom is a strength. I, I, I couldn't be here without my mom and my mom's support. So, And I've met people along the way uh, who became fans and been close friends. So um, honestly, I think it's a process. And as I said before, for me, it was never about uh, fame and making like a lot of money. For me, it was always you know, having impact, changing the world and making this world a better place. Uh, change people's mind and like through the practice that I'm doing with, with singers, uh, with vocal production and like teaching and vocal coaching, um, it's so amazing to see how little things can change their world and bring them to a better place where they can, you know, embrace and uh, stay happy uh, for the longest time because everybody is so insecure about certain things when it comes to singing. Uh, and it's all mental, I believe. And there are so many techniques um, to improve singing, but I think I believe it all comes from your mental power and your your like life and music philosophy. So I'm kind of like a thinker. I can continue going for like another hour, so you can ask questions if you have. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say that uh, you know having a, a parent who's uh, a musician as well, a, a musician as well, couldn't hurt. Uh, your development so mm -hmm. kudos to your mom I for um, for you know giving you that um, that uh, that inspiration that know-how uh, that determination mm -hmm. um, the expectation of what to expect but let's um, so that's fantastic uh, that's great there now let's talk about now you just told me that you just got off tour uh, in Europe yeah um, yeah did that also include going back to Russia? Yes. So some of the cities in Russia, um, Siberia, um, Yixinburg, um, and um, 
Moscow, St. Petersburg, uh, Kazakhstan, then uh, Ukraine, Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, yeah, so all those tours are just kind of like self, uh, like I, I'm putting them together by myself. But now um, everything started around uh, six shows. In 2018, me and my partner, Chad Mason, who I'm traveling with a lot, he's singing with Kanye West right now, his Sunday service choir. He worked with like a lot of different people like Pharrell, John Legend, and other big names. So we kind of like came up with a show, uh, played it in LA, and thought it would be cool to take on the road. And I got an opportunity to perform in Moscow, and I arranged five other concerts in five uh, different countries. It was uh, Israel, Latvia, Cyprus, UK, London, um, Russia, and Ukraine. So, and uh, we played those six shows, and around those dates, we arranged master classes as well because I love, you know, sharing with uh, those people, people from my culture, about my experience, about what I know, what I've learned throughout my way, and I thought it would be interesting to see um, how they're going to get that information. And uh, I did my first master class in 2018, October 2018, and I felt incredible about uh, the feedback that I was getting and how people were like reacting. And I started going back for master class and shows. Uh, in uh, uh, January this year, uh, me and Chaz again did a um, big performance uh, at uh, Zaradi Hall. It's the biggest, um, one of the newest and the biggest. Uh, venues in Russia for music, uh, it's, it's huge, uh, actually 2,600 seats. So we did that, the performance was a beautiful venue, and we did a solo concert in Moscow in a club. Uh, then we have another concert in Ukraine um, this month, actually, March 29th. Um, and it's all kind of like self-everything, self-funded, self-self. <laughs> and I love it because I feel like it helps me to realize how much I can accomplish on my own uh, because I think the industry today is about being multi person you know where you can do many things and that's how you win uh, and I really enjoy arranging shows and I love communicating with people and all of the shows and the master classes I've done in the past year and a half they were all like sold out like crazy so it's been really taking off in Europe for me and more master classes I teach, um, larger audience, larger fan base I build. So it's been incredible how one thing transitions to another. Um, yeah, and I do shows in LA, obviously. Uh, I just did a big performance at the Peppermint Club in September. Uh, sold many, many tickets, over 100, and I think the, the club was like, oh, we want you back. Uh, there was no new artist who sold that many tickets the first time they performed. So I was like, okay, it's a good sign. I actually had no idea I had that many fans in LA, to be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah, then I did uh, So Far Sound performance. It's a really cool community. They have uh, 400 um, offices, like 400 cities in the world. They put secret performances. Have you heard of them, So Far Sound? No, I have not. Yeah, so it's just a really cool organization they started in london uh with this philosophy that all of the artists deserve the attention you know how we play in bars and restaurants people just eat and talk yes. over music so the whole idea behind that community was people come to see the show to hear people's artists voices you know so they don't eat they don't drink they're just there to see the performance and those the concerts those concerts are secret so uh, the location is secret uh, they do really cool performances at the rock stores, uh, in like houses, and people come and they have no idea who's going to be playing and they discover new acts, new talents. So it's a really great opportunity for the artists to build a new crowd, new fan base, and for the people in the music to discover new amazing talents too. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you now, getting back to your recent tour, how did the... Um how did the how did it feel going back home and performing in front of your um, your fellow country countrymen? You know, for me, it, it, it doesn't matter where I'm performing. It's about the the feelings that I'm getting into when I see the people the people's reaction and the how well they respond to the music. 
So um, being here for like almost 11 years made me fully American. So I don't really have that Russian mentality anymore. And going back there, I always feel appreciation. And I feel like now I'm that example to those people that you can actually make it to the certain, you know, point in your life and nothing is impossible. Because people first looked at me like, oh, she's lucky. She went there or she got the right. People always, you know, people overthink everything, you know. Sure. When they see somebody succeeding, they like, oh, there's a rich husband or there's a rich dad. Oh, she's Russian. She's probably coming from money. You know, so all those judgments throwing at you uh, as an artist, especially from this country, because, you know, in America, there's a lot of, like, stereotypes about, like, you know, what like, Russian people is. And uh, I was able to break it in the music community in LA. So... First, when people told me, "Oh, the girl, oh Cooper, yeah, the Russian artist," it was I was I was offended to be honest because that was putting me into this category of those people who have no talent, no understanding of the culture, and have a lot of money, and they're coming from Russia trying to buy the way into this industry. And I always knew that's not going to be my case ever because I'm not the type of person. I was always about the music. So in that like 10, 11 years, I was able. Actually, I live in LA since 2012, so it's been eight years. Uh, I think I was able to change that perception and people don't think of me as like Russian artists. They just think of me as dope artists. That's what I think it's a big achievement for me. And I feel that it's like in the air, it's the energy. And then by going back to Russia, people see not Russian artists who made it in the United States at a certain point. They see American artists, they see international artists who is living through the music and sharing the gift of love through the music. So I don't think for me, it's important to be uh, presented as Russian artist who lives in America or American artist who goes on tour to Europe. Uh, I really want to explode my, um, it's like, I really want to go to different cities and different countries. I love traveling and my dream was always to go on tour uh, with, you know, with my music and share and share the gifts that I have and, and share the music that I, that I write with other people. So I never wanted to be just that person who travels uh, you know, um, just to be a tourist. I've always been looking forward to do um, tours okay. as an artist. So I, I really want to go to more uh, countries. Can, okay. you hear the, can you hear the rain? Yes, I can. Uh, by okay. the way, Cooper and I are in Southern California where it's raining cats and dogs right here uh, at the time of recording. Yeah. But yes, it's uh, it's not that distracting. But anyway. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah no I just problem. wanted to make sure. Yeah, so this is a good place to pause. I want to get into exceptional feelings. And this mm -hmm. is a, a duet with you and the aforementioned uh, Chaz Mason. How did this song yep. how did this song come about? Uh actually it was really random to be honest. I was in the studio with this guitar player, Elliot, and a new friend of mine producer. Uh and we kind of like uh started jamming. Uh, and I wrote the melody, and I'm usually really good with melodies and structures. Uh, but I was always so humble about writing my own lyrics because I was always thinking, I'm not from this country, somebody American should write the lyrics and the concept and the taglines. And then I kind of like heard the chords and I said exceptional feelings right away. Because when I hear the music, I see some sort of visual and I hear the words. I don't know, it's kind of a very creative process for me. I usually come up with titles first. I hear the song and I'm like, okay, what the title is going to be about? And I said, exceptional feelings. And then I started singing the melody. I lived with this melody for about two, three days. I brought it to my songwriting partner, Maya Linkson. And I said, I want the song to be about this. Let's write. And I kind of like wrote almost the entire lyrics by myself with Maya's help. Because we usually do collaborate a lot on lyrics because I'm still so unsure if I'm good enough, you know, to write lyrics. But I guess I'm getting better and better which is awesome. Uh, so, um, and then I had a performance at the Peppermint Club and I wanted to bring Chaz to perform with me. And I thought it would be really cool to do a duet out of this song because originally this song was a solo song, you know, I was singing by myself and the song wasn't recorded. Um, and then we did this performance at the Peppermint Club and people loved this duet so much. It was like, oh my God, record it with Chaz. You guys should do it. You sound so great together. So we did. We went to the studio and recorded uh, almost the next day. And uh, I thought it's, you know, it's always people are so, artists are about like, oh, what's the best time to put it out? Let's like do um, some like counting. Like what's the best day? Oh, let's do this. So I was just kind of like 
picked a random day to put it out, and we got such amazing reactions to the song. A lot of blogs written about it. Uh, a lot of like playlists. Like I, I put zero, zero money behind that song. I didn't promote it. I didn't do anything to it. Um, I just basically uh, uh, one blog premiered it, and it kind of started gaining, uh, you know, uh, interest through different blogs and uh, you know. Um, articles about the song. I'm like, wow, it actually could happen like this. You know, I've always been, you know, hearing all oh, like viral things. You know, like it's not that big to call it viral, to be honest. I think, but uh, honestly, it was super natural um, reaction. So people started talking and writing about it and featuring it um, on their own. And I was like, oh my god, it really works this way. So you don't have to actually go and like hire somebody and pay people to. You know, do things for you. Actually, to be this, you know, organic way. Um, so it was really cool to see how people uh, having this connection with the song. Uh, I always wanted to write a song that people can play at weddings and have their first dances. So I hope this song will gain uh, more like streams and more attention, and will become that love song that people can dance to at their wedding. That's kind of my my dream with this one. Well, it's um, I love it. I thought it was a great song, and I think you and Chaz make a great team. Um, so we've been talking about this song for the last few minutes. So let's not keep the the audience in suspense. This is Cooper Phillip and Chaz Mason with Exceptional Feelings. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com now back to our conversation all right and we're back cooper great song love the song you and chaz make a great team make a great team i appreciate it i appreciate it thank you no problem and um so speaking of the song uh exceptional feelings are you gonna go out again i know you just got back from europe are there any uh dates planned for uh the u.s touring wise Yes, I actually have a show uh, this week on Thursday, uh, March 12th, at Choir Lubish in uh, Hollywood uh, as part of the label showcase. Um, uh, I think Grant is putting it together. He was the one who uh, actually helped breaking uh, Billie Eilish. Uh, he has this famous radio uh, interview where he's doing, he's bringing all kinds of different new artists uh, to it and talks and let them perform. So I'm actually doing it this Friday as well. Uh, and then next week, uh, I actually, I'm actually helping a friend of mine <laughs> who came from Russia with me this time. Um, my best, my best friend, uh, Olga. Uh, I'm helping her to uh, record an album right now. So I actually vocal produce uh, her every day. We're in the studio, 10 to 12 hours every day. So on top of my shows, I have her project going on pretty heavily. Uh, but then the next time I'm going on, uh, on tour to Europe, it's going to be also this month, uh, March 19th. I'm going out uh, to Moscow. I have two shows there. And then I, I go to Ukraine. I do two cities this time, uh, two shows, uh, Kiev and Dnipro. Uh, and also I teach master classes in lessons uh, with my method. And then um, April, I'm going to be uh, also in Russia performing and teaching. Uh, then I have some shows. Uh, lined up in May and I'm doing a um, big festival in LA July 31st um, with my original stuff with my band that's kind of what I have going on right now and in the nearest future okay um, well yeah I definitely got to get out and chance to get a chance to see you in, um, in LA since you're so close before you uh, start hitting, uh, hitting the uh, other states and countries um so yeah, when I first great. when I first heard Exceptional Feeling, you said that you were uh, a big uh, fan of Mariah Carey. That's the first person I thought of, Mariah Carey. Um, yeah. who, who were some of your other uh, influences besides uh, Mariah Carey? Um, Alicia Keys, she was my favorite one. Uh, like Mariah and Alicia, I, I was growing up listening to both of them. But before I discovered Mariah and Alicia Keys, uh, I was a big fan of Alice Fitzgerald and Barbara Streisand. Um, my whole uh, competition route in life started with 
jazz singing competitions. Uh, so I started singing jazz standards as a kid of 10, 11 years old. And um, at my birthday, when I was turning 11, 11 years old, um, my classmate gave me uh, a CD of Ella Fitzgerald, Ella Fitzgerald's music. And I started listening to it and I had this incredible like, deja vu feeling like, like I know I've heard that before, even though I knew that I'm hearing it for the first time. It was just so close to my heart. This music it just, like sounds like like I've heard it before, but I actually haven't. Seen it. So it's kind of it was really weird. So I started like copying what I was hearing, uh, starting like doing scat and improvisations, and started preparing the songs to those competitions. And each competition it was like another step, another another road for me, you know. And then uh, I discovered Jane Monheit. I really like this artist. She's a contemporary jazz artist. She I actually won a lot of singing competitions with her versions of jazz standards. I love her. Then uh, another influence, Stevie Wonder, obviously. One of my favorites, uh, James Ingram, Tamiya. Uh, I love soul music. Uh, I love uh, Brian McKnight, Eric Benet. I actually got a chance to work with Eric uh, and Jane Monheit. Um, actually recorded two songs that I like uh, wrote, actually co-wrote two songs on this jazz album and she recorded them, it's out. It was really cool to know that your idol, the person you grew up with, is actually performing now your music, um, you know, partially your music, so it was really cool. And then um, Lauren Hill gave me a really big uh, singing jump because her singing is so unique to me, so I always felt like she's out of this world. Uh, her tone and the vibrato is so unique. Um, so I started, like, I watched uh, Sister Act, and all those songs, I started singing them, uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow, all the Gospels, and I started getting into gospel, and I discovered Kim Burrell, and she's like one of my biggest loves. Uh, I actually watched her perform live, and I met with her, and uh, surprisingly enough, she heard my name. She said, oh, your name is Cooper Phillip. I think I heard it, and I was like so shocked. So those are a few of my favorite artists, and I, I listen to a lot of different music, from classical, uh, Broadway, um, symphonic music, uh, pop, EDM, alternative. I think as an artist you should be able to first know and study what's going on around you uh, and get inspired because I think all the music that we write is about inspiration and to be inspired you have to live through certain situations or have certain things occur in your life and I think listening to other artists to other artists' stories and uh, music can inspire you to write your best song, you know? Right. So it's, it's a combination to me of uh, many different things, and uh, I love uh, to listen to just the music. To me, it's like the world outside of any genre, because I think, like we really, I always compare it to reading books, you know? Sometimes to be more knowledgeable in life, we take different literature, you know, it could be um, something, you know, like classical literature, it could be scientific or anything, and more we read, more we know about ourselves, the deeper we go in with ourselves, so I think with music is the same, you know, when I was a kid, uh, when I was a teenager, I always thought, well, Mariah is my, is my path, you know, I want to make this type of music, R&B, with lots of riffs, with soft undertones, with lots of backgrounds. But then when I started discovering other artists with different approach to singing uh, and different philosophy, I think it improved my own sense of artist, sense of personality, sense of character. So I think it's really important to study other people in other music genres and styles. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you a quick question. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, some great artists um, that you've worked with in your mind. Is there anyone out there that you haven't worked with that you would love to collaborate with? Uh, obviously, yes, but there are so many different incredible artists. I can, I only can name Mariah because she was like my first inspiration. Uh, she really like, her singing really inspired me to work and sing and uh, improve my technique so much so maybe maybe not if sing with her maybe I could meet with her and uh, share my gratitude with her <laughs> because she was definitely the one who you know sometimes it's crazy how 
artists can inspire the entire generation of other people, you know. Uh, my goal is to become one day that artist and have somebody coming to me in a year or like a decade and say, you know, I grew up and your music inspired me to be a better person, inspired me to become a singer, you know. And I already have some people who's coming to me saying, you know, we grew up listening to some of your like Russian songs and some of the songs that you put out like six, seven years ago and it's amazing. We like we covered those songs and we we've, we've been like winning singing competitions with those songs and you know, it helped us grow into people who we are today, you know. So it's it's the past I guess, uh, but yeah, definitely Mariah will be first first name on my list. Okay. Now let me uh, let me ask you, um, you have the um, exceptional feelings and we're going to close the show with uh, Thank You Heartbreak, which is another song. Is there a yeah. is there an album coming or is are you just going to release singles right now? What's the what's the go? Well, I have uh, over 30 songs that I've been writing and record, it's recorded in like the last two years. I haven't been putting them out. I don't know why. I guess I was just waiting for this magical moment. But uh, I guess you have to create that magical moment for yourself. Right. I, I'm planning on putting more music out. And I have one song I'm really excited about that's going to be the next single. It's called Not Perfect. I'm going to be shooting a music video for that uh, in April. And hopefully we'll put it out in May. Um, I think that's the strongest song that I ever written or like performed. Vocally and musically, I'm, I'm in love with this song. And I'm a perfectionist. If you know me a little bit more, you would know that I'm like so into details. I'm picky. I'm very specific about music. I don't like a lot of things. I'm very like, okay, if this is great, and I never say anything good about um, anybody if it's not, you know, great, if it's not like grande, you know, like amazing. So I've been having a very high expectations and like goals, you know, for myself. And I really hope that that next release will be um, like, change, like life changing for me, to be honest, because I think uh, I've played to a few of my like music co colleagues and some friends and other people and this next release I'm, I'm really hoping it's gonna be it's gonna be it <laughs> it's gonna make my career actually grow okay. faster and, and bigger yeah it's called not perfect and i'm really excited about this, this song okay well that's uh that's great um cooper and if you want to find out more about cooper you can check her out on her website at cooperphillipmusic.com you can also pick up her music at spotify apple music Google, mm -hmm. music, all the streaming service, I'm assuming. Um, are you also and Instagram? Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you're also on Facebook? Yes, I do have a Facebook page. I'm okay. not as active there, but the best place to check me out is my Instagram and Spotify. Instagram and Spotify. And okay. YouTube. Yeah, and YouTube always. Yeah. And YouTube. Okay. And YouTube all right. Well, Cooper? Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk to us today. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to add so before much. we uh, end the show? No, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. All right. To be uh, talking to you, and I'm really excited when you listen to the new fans. Yeah, well, thank you. I think you're going to garner a lot of fans. Uh, Exceptional Feelings is a great song. I, I love it, and thank I you think so you... Um, I, I think it's going to be very successful for you. So we appreciate you taking the time, Cooper. Good luck with everything. And uh, so we'll uh, keep us posted. Yes, will do. Thank you so much. I All right, Cooper. Have a great day. Thank All you. Right. That's Cooper so Phillip. Much. No problem. That's Cooper Phillip. You can find out more about Cooper on our website at cooperphillipmusic.com. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. And that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Cooper Phillip. You can find out more about Cooper on her website at cooperphillipmusic.com. You can also connect with her on Instagram. Also, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. You can connect with us on social media as well. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Join us next week for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for listening. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.